But now to the latest sex assault allegations against President Trump. But the real story here may actually be the president's response. Now we're talking about journalist and author E. Jean Carroll. She claims Trump sexually assaulted her in the fitting room of a Manhattan department store in the 1990s while he was married to Marla Maples. New York Magazine confirmed Carol told two friends about the attack right after it happened. She also saved the dress, she says, she was wearing at the time. Now the allegations, they're bad enough. Or that Carol is hardly alone. She is now the 16th woman, 16, to come forward and accuse the President of the United States of sexual assault obviously in earlier years. So the question is, how did the president respond to this jaw-dropping allegation? Well, he gave an Oval Office interview to The Hill, and he said this, quote, I'll say it with great respect. Number one, she's not my type. Number two, it never happened. It never happened, okay? Now, Carol responded on CNN. Well, that is his, with all the 15 women who've, or 16, who've come forward, it's the same. He denies it, he turns it around, he attacks, and he threatens. That so, is his, and then everybody forgets it, and then the next woman comes along, and I am sick of it. Now, for more, let's turn to Eleanor Cliff. She, a political reporter, author, and blogger for the Daily Beast, and for years, a regular on the McLaughlin Group. Yeah, I always say, seemingly on a daily basis, it's amazing what you can get used to, but when a credible person brings a rape allegation against the president and his response is, she wasn't my type, um, it boggles the mind, but we've somehow gotten to the point where that doesn't even register on the shocking level, on the shock meter, if you will. Um, but when you just put it into context from a guy who who obviously came through the Access Hollywood tape and everything that both preceded and followed it, and somehow we get a collective shrug. I don't know what that says about us or where we are. I think it has become something of a media story. You know, I think the media doesn't know quite how to handle, how to handle this. It is an allegation from 23 years ago. It's part of a, of, of a book. So, you know, people that raises red flags is this, you know, simply promotional Material and the president certainly took advantage of that sort of pre-existing, you know, mindset. I think on the part of the the, the media and the and the public, uh, and uh, conceivably the uh, the the story would have just uh, just been one more number to the lengthening very long list of, of women who have made allegations against this president. But then when asked about it, he said, "Oh, she's not my type." Um, this is um, a familiar pattern. He's responded this way to previous women. Stan he's he has stood up at rallies and say, look, look at her. You know, would I be attracted to her? I mean, he is uh, confusing, you know, rape with sex. It really is a violent uh, act. And, uh, you know, whether she appeals to him or not is, has, has, has nothing to do uh, with the allegation. But, um, this president has shown an uncanny ability to, um, I don't know, to dodge the serious consequences of acts that would certainly, you know, drive any other candidate out of the, out of the, out of the field. But people wouldn't accept it. I can answer this next question both ways, I think, credibly. But I'm curious where you fall. Do you think? The explosion of Trump onto the political landscape as both candidate and then now obviously as president. In some ways, you could argue that Me Too was a consequence of that, where there was a formal line about no longer, you know, what he said on that Axis Hollywood tape and the thinking surrounding it was, was acceptable. Conversely, I see what comes out of Alabama, not just with Roe v. Wade, but even a rapist theoretically having uh, parental visitation rights. Um, where do you think culturally? Um, his finger on the scale leans more to not what he wants, but culturally what's happened in the last three years because of Trump. Um, well, I, I do think that he uh, drew attention to the, uh, the, the you know, really gross misbehavior on the part of men in power and media and in business. And um, it, 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 he hasn't paid the consequences, but a lot of other people have. And uh, the, the other flip side of that, as uh, I think women are holding men, and it's mostly women holding men accountable, uh, how, how that's gotten certainly more traction 
the flip side of that is what you're seeing in, in Alabama of a Roy Moore saying, um, you know, that was all, you know, fake news made up, sort of borrowing a page from the president's uh, rhetoric and kind of defying his critics to defeat him again and sort of calling on his supporters to come out. And he becomes kind of this symbol of, you know, standing up to, you know, elites that are trying to, uh, you know, just destroy, you know, life as as people somehow nostalgic, nostalgically remember it from 30 or 40 years ago. So I, I do think the culture has both um, reacted in a positive way to some of the things that uh, Donald Trump, as candidate and as in his life, did uh, responded positively in saying no more. We don't condone this. But uh, the culture has also um, let him get get away. Uh, they they look at him and they see that he's not accountable. I mean, there's still a lawsuit or two in the works, so it's not over yet. And perhaps after he leaves office. Uh, he might be uh, held accountable. Well, that's a perfect segue um, to the next question, which is, in terms of the female electorate, a every poll you look at showed that he has historically bad numbers, does the president, with female voters, whether it be on policies issues, tonally, et cetera. That said, he wasn't polling well with women um, in 2016 either, but how significant do you think what he has said, the policies he supported, the people he's defended, um, how much do you think that's really going to impact? Will it keep women away that normally would have voted for the Republican nominee and turn out women that normally may have sat on the sidelines just because he's Trump? Well, that's what happened in 2018. Uh, now, he wasn't on the ballot, but in 2018, he really did have a show of force by women in the numbers that they turned out to vote and the numbers that they turned out to run uh, for election. You have over 100 women members of of the House uh, now, and I think the constituency that he uh, he get, the president gets hurt the most with would be suburban women who have traditionally voted Republican, and uh, they helped turn the House Democratic in 2018, and I expect that they're going to play an aggressive role in the 2020 election as well. Also, uh, young women, uh, millennials, I mean, his numbers among male millennials, too. I mean, he does not do well among young people. And young women who never thought they would have to worry about access to reproductive care are now seeing that, you know, these policies are, are in danger. So their voting turnout has traditionally been rather low, but they, they voted in historically high numbers in 2018. So I, I think this is a prelude to 2020. Eleanor Cliff, thank you so much for a few minutes. I appreciate it. Sure, thank you.